16. He planted numerous roots of virtue and did not mind his various sufferings. He had few desires and was content. He pursued only white armors and brought benefit to all beings. He was tireless in pursuing his aspirations and vows, achieving results through the power of patience. He constantly harbored compassion and patience for raw sentient beings. With a kind expression and caring words, he advised, taught, urged, and encouraged them. He was respectful to the three jurors and attended to his teachers without any insincerity or flattery in his heart. All of his conduct was magnificent, and he was a role model in every way. He regarded all dharmas as illusory and remained in the samadhi that is internally quiescent. He guarded well his verbal commas and did not ridicule others' faults. He guarded well his bodily commas and did not transgress any precept or codes of behavior. He guarded well his mental commas and kept himself pure and uncontaminated. Then come the explanation. The words planted numerous roots of virtue mean to accumulate merits and virtues. Roots are the foundation. They can give rise to myriad virtues. That which can give rise to something is the root. The root of virtue for the pure land school is this phrase. Homage to Amitabha Buddha. Namo Amitabha. When one focuses on and practices only the pure land method, one continuously and mindfully chants the Buddha name. This method will help us to keep our minds in an unperturbed and tranquil state from within where no affliction arises and not be attached to any phenomena from without. Actually, all of the 84,000 Dharma doors aim to achieve this state. Of all the methods, the Buddha name chanting method is the most convenient and the easiest in which to succeed. When one mindfully chants the Buddha name, one's cultivation will be enhanced by the supportive powers of Amitabha Buddha and all other Buddhas in the ten directions. This is why all the other methods cannot compare with this one. The words did not mind his varied sufferings mean that Dhammakara did not mind any of the sufferings he underwent. He accepted them peacefully. Sufferings are brought about by the evil deeds committed in the present and past lifetimes.